If you're suffering from pimples on your face, then this video is for you. In this video, I'll break down the many different conditions that can cause pimples on the face, what to do about them in the short run, and advise proper skincare for the face to make your condition better before you go see the dermatologist to find out how you can treat your condition better. Before we get started, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and click the notification bell to get notified of future episodes. Now let's get started. So pimples on the face can be caused by a broad category of conditions. They are inherently different, so they need to be addressed by different techniques, different medications, different follow-up time frames, and you need to know this. This is a pretty complicated issue to resolve, especially when you're dealing with a chronic persistent condition. So the first and most common condition to cause pimples on the face is acne. Acne can cause whiteheads and blackheads, meaning skin colored to pinkish bumps on the T-zone, on the cheeks, on the chin, and can sometimes affect other areas of the body, such as the shoulders, the chest, and the back. can also lead to inflammatory lesions, such as pustules, erythematous papules, meaning red blanching papules, meaning reddish pinkish bumps. It can also lead to nodules or cysts in the more severe cases, and eventually acne, even the milder forms of acne can lead to scarring of the areas that are affected. That includes the face as well. By the way, you don't need to have severe and persistent acne to lead to scarring of the affected area. So be mindful of that. You don't need to have nodulocystic acne to lead to scarring of the face. So if you're under the impression that your acne, despite being very mild or being very severe, is leading to scarring, that should be a red flag to you. It should prompt you to seek dermatology care as soon as possible so you can control your condition in the most effective way and stop the scarring from occurring on the face. Once you've stopped the condition and got it to remission, you can address the scarring in an effective manner in the many different techniques that are available nowadays. Acne is usually treated with retinoids, which are vitamin A related medications, and the more inflammatory types of acne are usually addressed with antibiotics. Some types of acne that are more hormonally driven can be addressed by hormonally targeting medications, specifically birth control medications in females, spironolactone or aldactone in females as well. In the more severe and persistent cases of acne, do consider getting yourself on isotretinoin or Accutane that I've spoken about in several past episodes of my show. This is a terrific medication that can actually get you resolution to your condition, stop it in its tracks, and in many cases can lead to long-term remission and even cure of your condition. Rosacea is another condition that can lead to pimples on the face. This is a pretty complex condition that consists of having generally sensitive skin on the face, it can sometimes affect the chest as well, but this is a condition that mostly affects the face, sometimes can affect the eyes, it can lead to redness of the face, specifically the central face, with rosy cheeks that can sometimes get out of control with flushing episodes and ultimately can cause pimples on the face, specifically in the case of acne rosacea. Acne rosacea and rosacea in general should be treated as sensitive skin is treated as I've talked about in many of my previous episodes on this show, specifically a very hands-off approach. Don't make matters worse by clawing at the skin using hot water, detergents, or physical abrasives. Don't disinfect the skin. Don't do anything crazy to the skin. Your best approach would be to use lukewarm water to wash the face. Do not use anything to wash the face unless your dermatologist actually prescribed a medication to use as a facial wash for the rosacea specifically. And don't use anything physically abrasive on the face as well. Be very mindful of what you put on your face in the case of rosacea. Don't use any excessive or gratuitous skincare products and moisturize consistently to take the edge off and allow the skin to recover in the best way possible. Also with rosacea, you want to be mindful of sun exposure as sun exposure and other triggers, by the way, such as specific foods, spicy foods, hot beverages, hot foods, and other triggers may make your condition worse. Folliculitis, specifically bacterial folliculitis and yeast-mediated folliculitis, can cause pimples on the face, specifically pustules and lesions that are pretty monomorphic, meaning they all look the same, and that can affect the face as well. If you've run into this type of condition and it is persisting with you, obviously you need to be seen by a dermatologist that needs to be diagnosed and treated. The good news about folliculitis, bacterial or yeast folliculitis, is that in many cases it is actually curable with the right approach and treatment as you can actually clear up that bacterial overgrowth 
or yeast overgrowth off the surface and get back to business as usual when the overgrowth has been addressed and your skincare has been addressed as well. Pseudofolliculitis barbae or razor bumps is a condition that is caused by a combination of abrasive shaving practices and the right genetics, meaning having some sort of a sensitivity or a tendency to developing these bumps over shaving areas. That can affect the beard area and the mustache area. It can look like folliculitis or like acne, but a very good clue that what you're dealing with is pseudofolliculitis barbie is that the areas affected are specifically the shaving areas, meaning the beard area and the mustache area. Can't present with those red pimples and sometimes darker colored bumps where the inflammation has been persisting for a long time, resolving and restarting, resolving and restarting with what we call post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation or discoloration. That can definitely be an appearance of pseudofolliculitis barbie. And the trick to treating pseudofolliculitis barbie is obviously gentle skin care, much along the lines of what we described for rosacea, along with minding how you shave your beard area and your mustache area with plenty of lubrication, a great shaving gel, a multi-blade system to make sure you're not causing too much drag or traction. You can use a clipper in certain cases to offset that traction factor as well. Make sure you're not getting as much friction and plenty of moisturization. In many cases, you may require antibiotic treatment to the area. While there usually are no bacteria that are involved in this, antibiotics work as anti-inflammatory agents over the area in pseudofolliculitis barbie. It can lead to improvement of your symptoms along with changing your skincare practices and your shaving practices to complement that antibacterial, anti-inflammatory treatment. If you've enjoyed this episode, share, like, and subscribe. Put a comment in the comment section and tell me what type of pimples do you have on your face and how did you address them so far? Have you seen a dermatologist for your condition? Are you suffering from rosacea, pseudofolliculitis barbie, acne, or something else? Let me know in the comment section. I'd love to know more about it. Also, don't forget to hit the notification bell to get notifications of future episodes. More great content coming your way right from this channel. Thanks for watching and God bless.